Hi, my name is Jim Brocker. I'm going to do a very, very brief uh, demonstration uh, using a temperature data, data probe. Um, and the point of this will be looking at the freezing point of water without anything added to it, without a solute added to it, and looking at the freezing point with salt added to water. That's the basic uh, premise of the uh, demonstration. We already know a lot about water. We know it's a polar molecule. We always draw the molecule and appreciate what it looks like with the oxygen being negatively charged and two positive hydrogen atoms. Um, it's very important that we draw those out and appreciate what they look like. We know water is a universal solvent. We know it expands when it freezes. It has a maximum density of 3.98 degrees centigrade. Uh, again, on the front page of our Earth Science tables, we have all this information about water specific heat, things we already know, very important and we refer to the earth science tables a lot. On the back page is reference to salt and the mineral halite is, is, is salt and the mineral level is NaCl, is sodium chloride, at least before it uh, dissolves in water. And uh, it's very important that we understand what salt is. Um, it's an ionic compound and we gotta keep that in mind. It has charged atoms that are gonna interact with the, mo the molecules of water when it dissolves in the water. But that's going on as, as the water freezes with the salt in it. So we're going to keep those things in mind. I'd like to ask you if water would be, as it freezes, would become, as it becomes ice, is it a mineral or not? Does that meet our qualifications for being a mineral? Um, keep that in mind, and I'd like to know what you think about that. I'd like to know what you think about what heat is, the difference between heat and temperature, what's really going on with the molecules as water freezes with something in it. You know, what's going on? Imagine in your mind these molecules interacting with each other. Okay, anyway, the point of this was simply to uh, do a very quick demonstration. I took a half a cup of water, which is 120 uh, milliliters. I took one teaspoon of salt, which is 4.9 milliliters. This is regular table salt, okay, and uh, our basic measuring cups. And I used the temperature data probe right here. And we did this very simple experiment in my little refrigerator here that my son brought home from college. I put it in the freezer, put the probe in there, and let her go. And we had the data points come, come out on the, on the spreadsheet, and the data was graphed on a plot. Um, so we had the benefit of doing that very quickly and easily with the data probe, which is really cool to see this so quickly. And uh, I can't show it on the screen now. In class, it's something you could be looking at. But the results were interesting, and this is the point, is to get you thinking about inquiry science, to get your minds thinking about, about what's happening, things you take for granted very often. But anyway, here is the, the plot. We do see that water froze at 3.3, negative 3.3 degrees uh, Celsius, okay, much lower than the zero degrees that we know water freezes at without anything added to it, okay? so. It raises lots of questions. Hopefully you're thinking in terms of, well, why is that? What if I added something else besides salt? Um, you know, your mind should be thinking about things at this point, and we could be discussing questions and uh, concerns that you might have about this simple demonstration. Okay, but I do want you to keep things, things in mind. You know, what is heat? What does it mean to say something is hot or cold? What happens at the molecular level when water freezes, right? Are there other substances that could affect the freezing point of water? You know, why does salt melt ice? Can water, water get colder than 32 degrees or zero degrees centigrade or not? And does ice emanate heat? Do we know that? A lot of questions. You should be thinking about a lot of different things. So the point of this is just to get you thinking and hopefully uh, we can pick up on this next class and do some data analysis and look at the graph more closely and everybody else can offer their opinions. Thank you.